So, for the last week or two, I have been working on procedural generation, um, specifically using uh, marching cubes. So, I've done procedural generation in the past, and uh, earlier in the semester even, I was working on height map based terrain generation. And, and that works totally fine, but height maps don't support uh, multiple values at the same height level. Um, marching cubes, though, can. So look, I've got all these little caves and overhangs, and uh, a standard height map couldn't do this. So uh, what marching cubes is, is it is essentially a way to create a mesh from a 3D grid of data. Okay, And then you take that 3D grid, split it into small cubes, hence the name marching cubes, and for each cube you place triangles uh, based on the vertex values of that cube, right? And um, in this specific uh, implementation, when I'm making that grid, right, I am treating it as a sphere with layers of simplex noise on top. So this variable here is just the radius of that sphere. Uh, I can even turn uh, the noise all the way off. So if I set the base amplitude to zero, and you see I just have a sphere, right? Um, but I have all sorts of uh, settings I can mess with. Uh, base amplitude and frequency, amplitude being like how far away from the center we are, and frequency being um, how tightly packed uh, the changes in height are. Uh, I've also got layers of Perlin noise, or simplex noise, excuse me, um, which I can control with this octaves level here. Um, and then uh, persistence and lacunarity, which is how the frequency and amplitude change uh, with each octave. I've also got this ISO level value here, and, and this is in the marching cube setting. So marching cubes uses this ISO level to determine which point values count as inside or outside of the mesh. And then I can also just um, change the level of detail of the mesh, how many um, vertices are allowed in this big uh, marching cube grid I set up. So yeah, um, I think this is a really good example, this planet specifically, of what marching cubes can do, because it's got lots of little interesting um, terrain in it, um, and the overhangs and, and caves, right? Uh, but for the next steps, I actually need to start making colliders for this whole thing, because right now I'm just rendering a mesh. Uh, so I need to make colliders, uh, so I'll have to filter out a whole bunch of um, duplicate vertices I have set up in the current implementation. Um, I'd also like to paint it at some point, and um, I'm also going to have to split it up into chunks. So right now, this is all just one big mesh, right? But I want to split it up into smaller meshes, because Unity can only support meshes that are so big. So if I want to get a higher level of detail on this mesh, I need to split it up into smaller pieces that all fit right next to each other. So I need to do chunks, I need to do collisions, and painting the planet. And I really want to see how it looks like in my solar system, right? That solar system I've been cooking up, well, it needs some planets to spin around in, huh? So let's do it.